In this video, we solve problem 11.3.044 from the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions text, 7th edition. We're given two vectors, u and v, in three-dimensional space, and we're asked to find the projection of u onto v and to find the vector component of u orthogonal to v. Just as a reminder of what these are, let's imagine that this is our vector u and this is the vector v over here. When we're finding the projection of u onto v and the vector component of u orthogonal to v, basically what we're doing is we're splitting the vector u into two pieces. We're thinking of it as the sum of two vectors. One vector is a vector that is parallel to v. That's called the projection of u onto v. And then there's another vector that is um, orthogonal or perpendicular to v. And that looks like this. And we've been labeling that W in our class. So when they're asking you for the projection of U onto V, what they're asking you for is this, it's the vector component of U that is parallel to V. And when they're asking you for the vector component of U orthogonal to V, that's W. These are actually really easy to find. The formulas were derived at the beginning of the semester. I think I'll just derive them for you again pretty quickly. We know that the length of the projection of u onto v um, can be given easily if we know this angle theta. The length of the projection of u onto v is just the magnitude of the hypotenuse, so that's u, times the cosine of theta because that's the adjacent side. But if I don't know what theta is, and I do know what v is, it's helpful to write this in terms of the dot product. So I say, okay, if I know u and I know v and I know them in component form like I have here, um, rather than having this cosine of theta, I'd like to have a dot product. So what we do is we multiply by exactly what we need so that that numerator is the dot product and the denominator needs to be the same thing. That, that way we're just multiplying by a well-chosen one. Now for the length of the projection, we need absolute values here because if the angle between u and v is negative so that, that v is sort of over here in this direction, um, the cosine of theta would be negative as well. Um, so uh, we need an absolute value here in order to get the length of the projection. So this gives us the magnitude of u dot v divided by v. That's the length of the projection. That's not what they asked for. They asked for the actual projection of u onto v. So to find that, we do this. We take the length of the projection. We actually get rid of the absolute value this time. So that if u and v are in the same direction or in close to the same direction, so that theta is between 0 and 90 degrees, the dot product is positive. If theta is between 90 and 180 degrees, the dot product would be negative, and then this would be a negative number. And that's exactly what we want. We want to multiply by a positive scalar when we're going this way, and we want to multiply by a negative scalar when the projection of u onto v goes this way. So we take this scalar, and then we multiply it by the unit vector in the direction of v, which is just the vector divided by its length, which makes sense. If you have a vector, it's five units long, and you divide by its length, uh, you divide by five, now it's going to be one unit long. And so we've got the length, the signed length of the projection times the unit vector in the direction of V. If this is positive, this projection points in the same direction as V, which is exactly what we want. Um, if this is negative, that means that the dot product is negative. So the vector goes that way. And this points in the opposite direction from V, which is also exactly what we want. So this simplifies to U dot V over the length of V squared times V this is a scalar and that's a vector. We just need to do the arithmetic now. Um, you can just use this formula when you see a problem like this, that's fine, but I just wanted to remind you where that formula comes from. So in order to use this formula now, I'm just using this version of it. Projection of u onto v is the length, or sorry, the dot product of u and v divided by the length of v squared times v. I need to compute my dot product, I need to compute the length of v squared, and then I need to multiply it by this vector v. So I compute the dot product 
by doing this. First, I'll write down u and v this way. I'll write them in component form. So v or u has components six, negative one, and negative one. V has components one and four and three. Actually, let me make sure I wrote that down correctly. That was actually supposed to be a negative i hat, so it's going to be a negative one, four, and three. Okay, and now we want to compute the dot product of those two. U dot v is comes from multiplying component by component and adding. So we've got negative one times six plus negative one times four plus negative one times three. So it's going to be negative six minus four minus three, which is negative thirteen. And then the length of v squared is the same as the sum of the components of v squared. Because the length of v just comes from taking these components, squaring them and adding them and taking the square root, and we're squaring them, it gets rid of the square root. So we just end up with this. Well, in our case, the components of v are negative one, four, and three. So this gives us one plus nine, which is 10, 10 plus 16, which is 26. So we have negative 13 over 26 here times the vector v. That simplifies nicely. So we have negative 1 half times the vector v, which is right here in component form. And then we just distribute the 1 half. A half of 4 is 2. OK, so that's the answer for part A. For part B, we just have to remember this concept. This vector plus this vector gives us u back. So this is all derivation. Then we're doing some computation. Let's do more derivation over here. The projection of u onto v plus the part of u or component of u that's orthogonal to v. If I take that and I add that, by definition, that's u. Well, I know what u is and I know what the projection of u onto v is and I'm trying to find that. So we just subtract. If this plus this equals this, then this is equal to this minus that. And of course, you don't have to memorize any of these derivations, although I think learning them, it makes it much more meaningful when you're actually doing this stuff. Um, you can just have this written on your formula sheet and that would work just fine as well. Okay, so w is equal to u, which is a vector with components six, negative one, and negative one. And then we're subtracting this vector here. And so we end up with six minus one half. And then we have negative one minus a negative two, so that's adding two. And then we have negative one minus a negative three halves. So I've got five and a half over here, which is the same as 11 over two. Negative one plus two is one. And then I've got negative two over two plus three over two is positive one over two. And that's the answer to part B. Now you can always check if you add these together, you should get U back. One half plus 11 halves is six, or sorry, 12 halves, which is six. That's what we're supposed to have. And then um, negative two plus one is negative one. That's what we're supposed to have for a Y component. And then negative three halves plus one half is negative two halves, which is negative one. So this plus this actually equals U. Um, now I did not check the orthogonality property. Um, you could take the dot product of this with this and show, um, or take the dot product of this with this and show that you get zero if you wanted to, um, but that's not necessary here. Um, so that's, that's it, I think we're done. That's how we solve problems like that one.